G'day friends, it's Andrew here again from Nature's Image Photography and this video is my follow-up to my recent video about macro photography on the Leica Panasonic 12-60mm lens. This time round I'm going to take you through the editing process for one of my favourite photos from the set and I've chosen this dragonfly because it's one of those photos that the closer you look at it the more you find to appreciate. Before we get started be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos from my entire world of photography and of course if you learn a lot from my videos you can always support me with a coffee and you'll find the link in the information below. And now it's time to go off script and start making things up as I go along. So we start here as usual in Adobe uh, Bridge. Now uh, this is the cataloging software and you can s I'm just scrolling through here so that you can get an idea of how many photographs I took uh, in the making of that video. Uh, so um, these were the ones taken in the park and uh, the ones that included the dragonfly. Now um, some of these photographs were just plain out soft, just not sharp enough. Uh, there are others that were just as good as the ones that I showed you, I just didn't select them. Uh, and out of these I picked the ones that uh, made it into the, um, uh, the video. Now down here is the photograph that I used as the, the cover picture and uh, I said at the end this was my favourite photo of the set. Uh, so that's the one I have already edited. This one, uh, right next to it, uh, was taken with the same press of the button. I was shooting in burst mode, uh, so uh, the camera fired off two shots with a quick press. So this is virtually un an identical photograph. It's just as sharp, uh, I just haven't edited it yet. So that's the one you've seen already. Uh, now this is a, an unedited version of an almost identical photograph. So this is the one I'm going to work on. Uh, so double click that and that opens it up into Adobe Photoshop and this is where we'll get started on the actual editing. Now people who watch uh, a few of these videos of mine uh, will know there are certain things I do that are fairly routine uh, and other things that uh, I'll, uh, I'll make up depending on the kind of um, subject I'm working with. But the first thing I'll normally do is start with a crop um, and I'm going to go to a 16 by 9 crop. Once again this photograph is destined for YouTube so the 16 by 9 crop makes sense. And here it's just a matter of trying to find the right balance. Now the thing I like about this shot is the fantastic detail of the uh, the eye and the face and the, the more you blow it up the, the more impressive it becomes. So I'm a little bit torn about how far to crop this picture because the closer I get the more you'll see that detail but I also like having uh, this nice little bit of colourful foliage in the foreground uh, to add a bit of a setting to the photograph. So uh, I think I don't want to crop too closely. Now I do want to try to make it uh, fairly symmetrical so I'm going to move that across. I want to have the same space uh, between uh, the wing and the edge of the frame on both sides. Uh, this is the, the shape of this subject lends itself to I think quite a symmetrical uh, photograph especially because it's facing straight at the camera like this. So I'm going to try to make the most of that symmetry in the photograph. Part of that is this tilt that I'm doing here because uh, the bug is tilted a little bit over towards the left and that might be the way it was sitting. It might be um, the um, I might have had the camera angle off just a little bit. Let's blame the bug. Uh, so I just want to try to straighten that up because if ever I see a photograph that has me wanting to tilt my head over to the left uh, to try to straighten it up then uh, that tells me that I should have got that photograph straighter in my cropping and editing. So I think that gets the balance about right. So I'm going to leave it there. I'll click enter on my keyboard and this is now the photograph we're going to be working on. Now having made that crop, uh, if I just blow this up to 100% uh, you can really see that fine uh, detail on the face there, especially in the eyes. That's what, what really drew me to this photograph. Uh, and you can start to see it there even just with the crop, but uh, we should be able to um, make more out of that uh, with this uh, bit of editing of the raw file. Uh, now once again, fairly routine for me, I'll start with exposure. Uh, I'm over here in just the basic editing area of um, Adobe 
um, camera raw. Uh, I start with exposure because I'm wanting to make the overall picture look about as bright as I'd like it to look. Not, not every detail of the photograph because I can work on the details as we go, but just to get the overall picture looking about as well exposed as I'd like it to be. Um, so I brought the exposure up a little bit, I've brought contrast up a little, and now I'm going to come to the whites and the blacks. Uh, and if I put click down on white and put my finger down on the alt button on my keyboard, uh, you can see that the screen goes black, and as I bring the slider across, it just begins to show us where the, the whitest highlights in the picture are. So I just bring it to that point where the, the white starts to show. Um, and I'm going to do the same with blacks. I put alt, uh, finger down on alt on the keyboard, click on blacks, and if I slide that across to the left, it then starts to show us where some of the blacks are coming through. And that um, just plain adjustment of uh, the whites and the blacks uh, and the exposure has already um, brought that photograph to life. Um, I don't normally do this when I'm making these videos. Uh, sorry, these photographs just for myself, but for a video I like to show you where we started and how far we've come. So you can see just with those little minor adjustments we've already made quite a difference to the photograph. Now I can see that uh, there are highlights in here um, on the face of the bug and also down some of these um, little bits of foliage in the front that are a bit overexposed and washed out. Or maybe not overexposed, but now that I've brightened them up they look a little brighter than I need them to be and also uh, some darker shadows back here. So having now got my whites and blacks in place, I'm going to lift the shadows a bit, well maybe quite a lot, and I'm going to pull down the highlights uh, in order to try to prevent those uh, brighter areas from being overexposed. Um, maybe add that bit of contrast there. I'm going to come down to clarity. I find that clarity tends to um, just take a photograph and make it look a bit more three-dimensional. Um, all of these things you'll notice, oh, apart from the shadows there, I'm being fairly careful with. I'm not going overboard. With any of these sliders, you can go too far and your pictures just look awful. Uh, but just bring it up a little bit. I might take that to about 20. And that just gives it that extra bit of three-dimensional quality. Now, the sliders you can always revisit. So I might just bring that brightness up a little more with exposure. Not too much bring the highlights down. This is really just a balancing act. I'm going to uh, come down to vibrance here. Uh, that just brings a bit of richness into the colors. And that is really starting to give our photograph a lift. Uh, so once again, we'll come down here and see where we started and where we are now. And it's made a big difference to the photograph. But there's still more that we can do. Um, now uh, I think some of the, the darker shadow areas here, even though I brought the shadows way up over on the right, I think some of the darker shadows are still looking uh, a little heavy. Uh, and there's a couple of spots on the shot uh, that I think are a bit uh, pale. The, um, the little shape on the face here and some of these areas of the leaves are a bit bright. So now I'm going to go from editing um, the entire photograph at once to selecting parts of the picture that I'd like to work on. Uh, and that's where I come across here to um, the masking tools. And so I click masking. And Camera Raw has recently brought out a whole new suite of different masking tools. Um, the one I'm going to use at the moment is the brush. Uh, that, this is just what used to be the old adjustment brush. And I'm going to, you can see my circle area there, that's the area that I'm going to be working with. I'm going to make that a bit bigger. Uh, and I do that using the bracket keys on my keyboard. And then I'm going to come down here, I'm going to come to exposure, bring that up a little, and bring up shadows. And these sliders look pretty much like the um, the same uh, slide as you saw in the basic editing area, uh, and they are, except that now what I do will only happen to the areas that I select. So now uh, you can see my circular area there. I'm just going to bring that across these darkest areas, and it's just going to lighten up those heavy shadows so that um, they, they're not sort of overpowering to the picture. Um, I'm also going to just make my circle a bit smaller here, and um, just lighten up those shadows areas too. The, um, there's some feathering applied to the edges of the circle so that um, you don't get a hard outline between um, 
the areas that you edit. So that has gotten rid of uh, some of the heaviness from those shadows. Um, now, like anything, you can always revisit the sliders. So if you feel that you've gone a bit too far, you can always pull those areas back a little bit. And um, maybe that works a bit better for me. Uh, the bit of shadow around the outside tends to draw your attention to the, um, the insect. It's just they were a bit heavy before. Uh, and by lightening them up that little bit, I think it just makes the picture look a lot more natural and a bit less contrasty. Now I'd also like to work on those highlights and that means creating a new mask. Come back to brush. Um, now this time I'm going to make my circle smaller and I'm going to come across to exposure <coughs> and down to highlights. Bring the highlights down a bit and now I'm just going to bring that around these areas, these brighter paler areas. Here I might actually um, make the circle bigger and I'm really just looking to bring down a bit of that washed out highlight of the um, the foliage there. Um, now I brought exposure down but if I bring down highlights more I think that's bringing out some nice richer colour there uh, on, on the leaves um, and it's also taken out that sort of washed out, very white look that was on the bug, uh, the face of the bug there. Now it's got that nice blue back. And that's just where there was, uh, because it's a bit of a shiny surface, a lot of reflection coming off. So it was looking very white when in fact it's blue. So bringing that pale area back uh, has um, enriched some of the colour there. So I think this is starting to look pretty good. Um, now having brought this part of the face down a little bit, uh, I'm just going to come back to our original sliders, maybe bring the, the highlights up a little. These are all things you can revisit and uh, revisit again as you go through the process. And I think that is looking pretty good. Once again, look, let's look at where we were and where we are now. So at this point overall I'm pretty happy with the photograph. Now that I've got my brightness about where I'd like it to be, uh, I am going to have a look at white balance. Uh, I've always said that I find that the um, Lumix G9 tends to skew a little bit towards magenta. So uh, I, I'll often have a look at the white balance. If I click daylight, that's just the computer's guess uh, at what daylight white balance should be. I actually think that's a little bit too on the yellow side. So I'm going to go back to as shot. Uh, but I am going to bring the magenta across sorry, the, the tint across a little bit towards the left, away from magenta and a bit more towards green. And I'm going to grab the temperature and add a bit of warmth. So it's doing a, a bit of what the daylight white balance did, but it's doing it in a more subtle way. And I'm happy with that. Um, so overall I think I'm getting to the stage where I'm done with basic. I quite like the look of that photograph now. Uh, so I'm going to shut down basic and work my way down. So I'll have a look at sharpness. Uh, now the best way to uh, work with sharpness is to bring your uh, screen up to about 100% view. And so now I'm going to come to detail and this is where the sharpening and the noise reduction is. I usually bring noise reduction up to about 55. The default is 40 so 55 is not a huge increase on that. Uh, but I also want to look at noise reduction. This was not a particularly noisy photograph, it was only 400 ISO, but when you lighten up shadows quite a lot, uh, the noise will start to appear in certain areas that you know really should be nice and smooth. So I'm going to bring noise reduction up to, um, oh, let's say, 25, and I'll get rid of um, some of that uh, speculiness throughout the photograph. Um, but you can see now we're getting nice, sharp, um, detail there. We've gotten rid of all that noise so that's looking a lot better. Um, now what else can we do? If I shut down detail uh, I might come down to effects. One thing I like doing sometimes in effects is using a little bit of a vignette. Uh, let's see if that helps. Oh, got to get it right. There we go. What, what a vignette does is it actually darkens down around the outside of the picture which helps draw your attention to the center. Now I think I'm going to not do the vignette though. As I said, I'm making this stuff up as I go along. 
because it sort of undoes everything I did before where I was lightening up the shadows around the outside because uh, I thought they were a little bit heavy and a vignette's just going to bring that back. So I'll leave that at zero uh, and now I'm actually pretty happy with this photograph. I am going to be a little sneaky. I'm going to do one more um, adjustment brush. Uh, so I'm going to create a new mask brush and I'm just going to come into this area at the edge of the wings. I really like that fine filament detail on the wings. Um, and what I'm going to do is add to the clarity because uh, clarity can just, it doesn't sharpen a photograph but it can make it look a little bit um, sharper, with a little more clarity. So I'm going to just bring that circle size down and just in this area where the detail is already pretty good, uh, what I, I guess what I'm trying to do is make the most of that um, nice clarity. I can't even really tell if that's making a huge difference or not, but um, why not? And while we're at it, I might actually add some clarity onto the bug's eye, because uh, it might just make that texture stand out a little bit more. So if we bring that back up to the 100% view, Let's go to 100%. Um, oh, I've gone the wrong way. There we go. Yeah, I don't know if it's made it any better. It certainly hasn't made it any worse. So I'm going to go with that. And I think I'll call that job done. I'm pretty happy with that. So at this point, all I have to do is uh, click open. That sends the photograph over into um, the other side of Adobe Photoshop. And that's where I'll do the finishing off. Okay, so now that we're here in Photoshop, um, all I really do is um, double check my work in a way. Um, you can understand sometimes when you've stared at a photograph long enough, you can reach the stage where you're not sure if you're making it better or worse. So, so at that point it's time to, to stop working on it. Um, but what I'll do here is just come to Auto Contrast and see what that does to the picture. And it's made a fractional difference. It's made it a little bit brighter added just a, a fraction more contrast uh, and you can undo that and then decide whether you like it better or worse. I take the attitude with this that if the little auto adjustments that I make here make it look better I go with that. If they make it look worse I don't. So I'm going to go back to uh, auto contrast and I think that brings it to life just a tiny bit more. Um, the other one I'll sometimes use is auto levels. So I'll just give that a go and that takes the same idea a little bit further but I think that actually makes it look a little bit on the pale side so I'm going to undo that uh, just click cancel because I like that um, a bit of extra um, I don't know darkness in the shadows that uh, that got lost with the auto levels so now that I'm going to call that job done all I have to do at this stage is resize it to save it so I'll go to image image size the photographs I put into my YouTube videos I resize to 2560 pixels on the long side. So I click OK. Uh, now that makes it look a bit smaller, but when you blow it up to 100%, uh, it's still a good sized image and certainly good enough for a screen view. Um, and so that is the picture that we're going to be um, making our finished product. So there you go, that's the entire workflow from selecting the raw file to creating the finished image you see here. For the record, if you're interested, this is the version I put into my last video, and this is the version you've just watched me edit. Because this is not an exact science, you can see I've come up with a slightly different result second time around. It's a little softer and a little warmer. I guess you can judge for yourself which one you prefer. And if I did it again tomorrow, I'm sure it would be slightly different again. But that's all part of the art of photography, and I hope you found the video interesting. By the way, if you're interested in seeing my video about macro on the 12 to 60 mm lens, I'll put a link in the info below. Until next time, I'm Andrew Goodall, this is Nature's Image Photography, thanks for watching.